Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're here, I assume you're done with the skinning. So congrats, it's no small achievement. After skinning, we come to skin morph. If you've been patient while skinning the character, you will need skin morph for mainly elbow, knee, shoulder and hip joint. And it also depends on how realistic you want your animation to be. Where do we require skin morph? We require skin morph for mainly two things. First is uh, even if you have skinned the character well, you will realize that when we flex the elbow joint of the character, the mash just collapses, which is not realistic. And second, normally when we flex our joints, the bone of the elbow becomes prominent which is not happening in the case of the character and similar changes can be seen with other major joints as well beside correcting the joint animations we may also want skin morph to simulate muscle contractions like the contraction of biceps so today we will apply skin morph on elbow joint. Uh, we'll uh, apply it on the elbow joint only, but same steps applies to all the other joints. So the first thing you make sure is that your elbow joint has a key at the beginning frame, that is at the zero frame when the elbow is at relaxed position which in this case it is 180 degree now turn on the auto key and bring the frame to 50 and flex the elbow to 90 degree next we will bring the frame to 100 and now we will flex the joint to 60 degree and uh, we'll do it for both the right and left elbow joint. Now bring the slider back to zero frame and go to the modifier panel to apply skin morph. It is absolutely important to apply a skin morph when the joint is at relaxed position or in this case 180 degree as the modifier will make all the calculations based on the initial position of the joint. After applying the skin morph, we'll go to the drop down menu and add bones, which are part of that particular joint that you want to modify. So I will select forearm and upper arm, both left and right. Well, as you can see, the skin morph has taken up the selected bones and you can see them as yellow lines. Now select the bone where you want to create a skin morph. So we have selected a forearm bone. And now we'll go to the frame 50 where the flexion is at 90 degree. So we want to put a uh, skin morph here so go down the menu and click create morph so you will see the highlighted bone after this click edit so uh, you will see that after clicking the edit all the vertices become yellow now what we'll do is we'll select all the extra vertices that are not part of the vertices which needs to be edited. And we will remove all these extra vertices. So why do we do that is that the software won't have to calculate all the vertices while animation every time. So we will remove all the extra vertex from the editing process by clicking remove vertex now come to the elbow of the selected forearm and start tweaking the vertices 
so first of all we will correct the flatten mash now my advice will be to resist the urge to tweak too many vertices keep it to where it is required to create a realistic elbow at 90 degree flexion and second we will create a pointed end of the elbow now come out of the editing mode and move the slider to make sure that your deformation is working so you bring it to zero and then you bring it to 50 frame and see whether you can see the change in the deformation so after making sure that your skin morph is working now you can go to frame 100 and you will see that at 60 degree flexion this elbow requires one more skin morph so repeat the process at 60 degree as well so this way you can apply skin morph to any joint you want to correct uh, with this we come to the end of character setup series as now our character is ready to be animated so in summary as you can see the stacks of modifier so below uh, you know at the lower most is the editable poly then we unwrap the character which we have collapsed after that we have a morpher after that we have added poly then comes the skin and skin morph and if your character has some cloth simulations then it will come above all these modifiers and your turbo smooth can be below the cloth modifier or above as you may like it so i hope now you're ready to create your own lovely projects and please don't forget to like and subscribe so i'm signing off for this particular tutorial series i hope to see you again